The story of the hydrogen bomb begins not with a bang, but with a flicker of terrifying possibility. In the crucible of World War II, the Manhattan Project gathered the world's greatest minds to unlock the atom's core. Their success and the devastating use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki proved humanity could wield the power of nuclear fission. But for some, this was merely the first step. The end of the war did not bring peace, but a new, colder conflict. When the Soviet Union detonated its own atomic bomb in 1949, a new and horrifying chapter of the arms race began. In the United States, influential physicists like Edward Teller argued that a far greater weapon was not just possible, but necessary. They called it the super, a weapon that would work not by splitting heavy atoms apart, but by fusing light ones together, mimicking the very process that powers the sun. The result was a design of diabolical elegance. The core concept, known as the teller Ulam design, used the immense radiation from a fission bomb, an atomic bomb, as a trigger. The A-bomb would act as a matchstick, creating the millions of degrees of heat and crushing pressures needed to ignite the fusion fuel, unleashing a thousand times more energy. After a series of tests, the United States prepared for the ultimate demonstration. The goal was to create a dry fuel thermonuclear weapon, one that used a solid compound, lithium deuteride, making it small and light enough to be delivered by a bomber. The device was codenamed Shrimp, and the test was named Castle Bravo. On March 1, 1954, at Bikini Atoll in the Pacific, Shrimp was detonated. A silent, blinding flash gave way to a monstrous sun that bloomed over the ocean. The fireball swelled to over four miles wide, boiling the sea itself and vaporizing the test island and two others nearby. But in that flash of creation, there was a terrible miscalculation. Scientists had assumed that only one isotope of the lithium fuel would participate in the reaction. They were wrong. A second, seemingly stable isotope also reacted, unexpectedly breeding more fusion fuel and nearly tripling the bomb's power. A planned 6-megaton device became a staggering 15-megaton blast, 1,000 times more powerful than the bomb that destroyed Hiroshima. The consequences were immediate and horrifying. The massive fireball dredged up tons of pulverized, irradiated coral from the seabed, blasting it into the stratosphere. This created a vast, deadly cloud of radioactive fallout. A hundred miles away, the crew of a Japanese fishing boat, the